Greetings, dear friends. Welcome to the Creative Lab Awakening the Souls of Our Nations. On behalf of the Hikal Group from Jerusalem and Klangshawe Group in Germany, in cooperation with the 2025 initiative, I welcome you into our circle. We continue our work and I invite Uta to take us in continuation of our journey today. Okay, thank you, Sasha. Thank you everyone for coming. Welcome to our Taurus Nations Lab session. In the Nations Lab, it's spiritual students from many nations that come together every month as a council of elders in training. We practice skills which may be required for the personnel of a soul-guided United Nations sometime in the future. And we address different world issues. As we shared with you last time, in the last session, we will now, for this next cycle, experiment with a few new ways of working. And actually, it's three enlargements, we could say. The first one is uh, that we have a, a plan for the year that we already um, uh, shared with you last time. And we hope that uh, to have this larger overview will facilitate uh, more of a co cooperative planning with all of you that we would very much uh, invite. And we will share the program again with you at the end of the session. So the second point is that we will build on our experience with the snapshots of nations and enlarge now our perspective looking at larger entities like blocks or like continents like today or alliances. And the third enlargement has to do with our work method. Um, in, in the last season, we dealt with um, moving our attention to the mental plane more, to the area of the thinkable, dealing with the thinkable, which is attempting to connect the concrete happenings and the plane of causes in our consciousness. And now we will take it a step further. We will make an experiment of making the thinkable feelable. Um, we, we hope to do this by addressing the subject under consideration as a living entity. It's a bit like the method that is called family constellation, where we perso personalize uh, the entity under consideration, having a constellation of entities that uh, we address as living beings and embody them, letting them talk through us in the first person. So we will experiment with this. It's not yet clear if uh, this will work for us here in the Nations Lab, but we would today like to try it out. What will remain as it was until now is first of all our safe space, which we have built in the form of our council chamber for elders in training. It will continue to serve us as our solid base from which all, all of our work is done. And in the council chamber, we will continue to practice Asajoli's injunction, transform conflict into creative tension, which is actually the culture of diplomacy, very well, very important for UN, and it's the forte of the incoming fourth ray. It's the art of discourse. 
It's actually the practice of holding different narratives in one space together so that they may harmonize eventually into a planetary perspective. Yeah, and in general, of course, uh, psychosynthesis of nations on planetary psychosynthesis will accompany us as our main scaffolding through this next cycle. Okay, so it brings us now to our theme for today, which is Europe in the balance. We will, at the moment, in a moment, we will invite Sabine from the Klangschale Group in Germany, who will present Europe. And she will do so as an evolving entity. And by the way, we are very happy to announce that Sabine is now also an active member in the Nations Lab team. And she will now take us on a journey through Europe's past and into the present, and then onto a vision of a Europe coming into maturity. After that, we will invite Europe as an entity into our council chamber in meditation and listening to her in the first person. And then, in the following sharing, share with Europe our impressions. So I give over now to you, Sabina. Welcome. Thank you, Uta, for the warm welcome. And good evening and good day to everybody. Hello, dear friends. Yeah, welcome to a courageous and visionary outlook into a new and demanding era for Europe, the era of 2025 and the following. We will attempt to meet Europe as a geographical, political, and cultural entity, and as an evolving being, tracing her past, observing her present, and accompanying her in her striving towards her soul calling. The Tibetan master has outlined Europe's soul calling in the following quote. Europe is the field for the education of the world in the ideas of a true world unity and for the wise presentation of the plan. From that continent can the inspiration go forth to the East and the West. This quote, and also the vision of a possible Europe by a professor for European studies, Ulrike Guerreau, are the inspirations underlying the following observations. So, let's get started. First point, Europe, a long work in progress. The Europe of today mostly perceived as the EU, the EU, the European Union, is the result of a centuries-long development. For over 10,000 years, Europe's indigenous population has been enriched from Central Asian tribes. It had become a vital amalgamation of diverse influences, some very obvious, like the Roman Empire, some hidden, but visible in the blood group AB that came only in existence when Asian and European blood was melting into one. In the beginning, there was no central power in Middle and Northern Europe, but a constant migration and movement, a patchwork of clans, tribes, languages, in day-to-day -day striving to survive. The Mediterranean area had at the same time a different status quo of evolution. It was Athens, the Greeks, who had already invented democracy. 
with the arrival of Christianity in the Middle European area, we see the first larger structures appearing. For example, the Holy Roman Empire of the German nations, the later France and others. Sabina, I apologize for uh, interruption. Uh, Your sound yeah. is not very good. Uh, is there another way, uh, another microphone maybe you can use? I can try with the headphones and I hope this will be better than just a second, please. I prepared them here for this case. And, um, Uh, no, we cannot hear you this way very far. Okay, yes, I, I'm sorry, I have to, what, can I, what can I do to optimize the sound? Uh, can you say, uh, in other words, your sound seems like started getting through? I try, so I make maybe a bit louder again. This is the most I can do now with the microphone. Yes, now now it's uh, it seems to be um, better. So let's let's continue. Hopefully, you can you can you can hear me all. Thank you. No problem. It's important. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. Let's go back with the arrival of Christianity in the Middle European area. The first larger structures appeared like the Holy Roman Empire of the German nations, the later France and others. These developments were marked by constantly changing borders and self-definitions. Europe seemed to be a work in progress, a patchwork. From her mythical beginning as a Phoenician princess, passing the Middle Ages time as the Christian Occident, up to the Renaissance movement, which marks the passage to modern time. We would visualize Europe as a very experienced lady in observing the rise and fall and melting of cultures, religions and powers, who is maintaining an endless web of roads for people moving in and moving out. For centuries, Europe's task was and is to contain and manage a dynamic balance of perpetually moving elements. From Europe, the western center of the old world, started the exploring and overtaking of the new worlds. And this is not only a story of success and glory, but also of karmic shadows for which responsibility must be taken now to not be repeated in the future. Point two, Europe, a place where synthesis may happen. After World War II, the deep need and wish of all war traumatized European nations was a commitment for democracy, for human rights and the rule of law, for creating a new solid alliance that should act and work and trade together. Never again a single country should be able to act independently from the others, nor to produce and sell weapons nor prepare or start a war. Among them, Germany is an incredible burden of guilt and shame. The European world was hungry to build a new society. Today, the European Union can look back on about 70 ambitious years of hard work to realize a great peace and group project evolving and administering a coordination cooperation group of nations, acting and organizing themselves in group processes. 
grappling with the challenges of balancing the huge differences in social, political, economical, environmental, also cultural fields. We may have empathy with the verily Sisyphus labor of endless sessions of working out the right formula to synthesize all members behind a new law, a new committee, and so on. Europe went forward steadfast on her way, while one difficulty after another was surging against her fortress. Unanimity is sometimes impossible, sometimes difficult to generate, and sometimes mysteriously just happens. It was a long and stony road, but walk with patience, with correctness, with much trial and error, and always a lot of researching, studying, discussing, and convincing labor. In the classical European discipline of discourse, thesis, antithesis, synthesis, and integration, of all aspects was being forged in moment to moment dynamic balancing again and again a step by step a stop and go road to install one after the other the european institutions councils committees organization all these necessary parts to make a big organism work to slowly, slowly not only plan such a thing on noble writing desks, but applying laws and procedures in the real life structure of the European societies. To make Europe a safe, a right, a prosperous, a peaceful and democratic entity. Europa created herself as a partner and a friend as a loyal ally and as a place where many people of the world wanted to be. Let's say the Phoenician princess had entered her next step to learn to manage a household, to take care of more and more children, to feed and dress them, to give them education and perspectives, and so on and so on. Europe was on her way to become a maternal force. She was the one who must recognize and feel each of the family members, who needs to understand the smallest need and the largest context and result. The building of Europe remains a permanent process of synthesis. Today's and tomorrow's Europe will need all her experience, not only to continue balancing the forces inside of her, but to redefine her relations with her partners near and far. Most importantly, she must remember her sovereignty. We could see her as an integrating personality, who perhaps in a moment of crisis and conflict fell into the classical trap of returning to a previous stage of development. In a world of growing multipolarities and still mighty patriarchal claims, the EU is under immense pressure. The Princess Europa, like many princess daughters, enjoyed for a long time a strong patriarchal backing and support by her big brother, the United States of America. She feels conflict between her original goal to be a peace developing soft power and her wish to remain a loyal ally, almost ready for war now, side by side with those who supported and protected her in her early beginning. 
to find her own stand, her own point of gravity. In this rebalancing crisis is an opportunity for Europe to become a mature and self-guided being. There is a time to obey and there is a time to guide. Other countries were and are expecting Europe to offer guidance, to be a recognizable lighthouse in a rough sea, to show how to build a way out of old patterns of either friend or enemy. Europa, who was the main victim of the old iron curtain that divided her in two, should not follow the latest tendency to build new walls and iron curtains. Europe, if she can find her own point of gravity, can become a living example of a place where synthesis can happen. She has much to offer. Europe's art of discourse and diplomacy, her ability to trade and initiate constructive cooperation are all well-trained skills that work for centuries. A mature feminine Europe will not want to beat and win by being the stronger or the better equipped one. Europa can count on her focused ability to create meaningful connections. She does not want to exclude, to deny or even destroy a difficult or confusing member of the family of nations. She learned to use her strong will to find a way to listen even better than before, to give space and to weave in a new color when a hole was burned into the carpet of the common ground. Constant dripping of water on stone, loosening and tightening in well-chosen chosen moments are means of a soft and silent and yet potent power. Europa has learned to be strong in her decision and determination, but to remain soft and flexible in the way to reach it. Europa can and must now frankly take her right to offer her own way to cool down the hot and dangerous situation to be a self-created and sovereign safe place where exchange is possible and welcome. Wouldn't it be a good example to confirm clearly the mission of peace by a whole continent with 550 plus million inhabitants? It is time to defend and stand up for this. Then Europe could indeed become the space where synthesis can happen. Point three Europe, a safe space for difficult conversations. You recognize already we are passing to the more visionary part of our presentation now. Looking at the quote of BK, how can Europe rise to its predestined mission to be a developer of the ideas of a true world unity, to lead by living example? We would like to present three core ideas, three possible steps into a new era. Let's try to make these visions at least thinkable, maybe feelable, as our part in helping them to manifest. The first goal, a European Republic of Citizens. Europe as a continent counts 47 nations. 27 of them are currently part of the European Union 
of this experiment towards a European Republic of Nations. The idea of a European Republic of Citizens is not about deleting the concept of nations. It is about enlarging the European identity beyond the EU, making it more inclusive and equal to all. The current member nations of the European Union are very different in size, very different in economic power and also interests. In consequence, when voting as nations, the big nations like Germany have an overproportional influence on the results. A European Republic of Citizens instead of a European Republic of Nations, which forward-looking European thinkers are contemplating, could give every citizen's voice the same weight and attention no matter whether they belong to, to a long-term and rich member like France or to a new, small and less rich member like Bosnia. Under the roof of an European Republic of Citizens, every cultural or regional unit could identify to be European. This would solve, or at least ease, many regional and ethnic independence quarrels, like for example in Catalonia or Greenland. As a Greenlander, you won't accept being subsumed and named Danish, but you are fine to be European. Another positive side effect would be the easing, the easing of many old and new shadows from colonialism or racism. Minorities could engage in local citizens' councils, decide about their matters and put their region directly forward in the European Parliament. Such a new setup would require the taking of more responsibility and involvement by the citizens themselves. A movement in this direction is already underway for some time. In preparation for the European Conference of the Future, which was held in 2021 and 22, there was an extraordinary year-long series of Europe-wide discussions and cooperation between citizens on the question of what kind of Europe they want to live in. Taking on responsibility and getting involved in an active participatory democracy is what European citizens expressed as a clear wish in that conference. In the end, the co-chairs of the executive committee presented the heads of the European Parliament, the Council and the Commission, a final report with 49 proposals. The proposals contained general objectives and over 300 specific tasks for the European Union institutions. Within their areas of responsibility, the three institutions are now examining how these proposals can be implemented in compliance with the treaties. The current president of the European Commission gave her support to open a European convent to transfer these proposals and wishes into European law. Second goal, a European social policy, a commitment for the good of all citizens. Once upon a time, Europe's social policy with fair salaries and a balanced gradient between rich and poor was unique in the world. Neoliberal globalization and concentration of power in a few multiplayer's hands are undermining the typically European middle-sized of family-run companies. It is the local creativity and the special traditional competence 
that gives forward drive and joy in creative work and ultimately ensures a healthy economy and welfare for all. A European-wide protection against overgrown capitalism and overblown financial promotion would safeguard local healthy business structures of production and service. This would not only be sustainable, but could also attract and integrate citizens from other parts of the world. Europe-wide social policies of health insurance, pensions, unemployment insurance, etc. would enable normal people to stay where they live or change their place of residence as they wish, while enjoying equal rights wherever they are. Social policies based on the commitment for the good of all would create the cohesive field of Europe. Out of such a politics of care, equal rights for all could finally be enshrined in a European constitution. From such a solid basis, unified political agreements about climate, migration, security, concerns, and foreign affairs would become possible. A rebalanced and diplomatic relationship with Europe's eastern neighbors would seem now to be the next natural step. Also, when it seems to be fully utopia, we know. The third goal, good neighborhood within the Eurasian context. In 1989, the creation of a political European Union in cooperation with the Russian Confederation was an explicit goal. Also, the current war has been freezing a lot. Europe must be ready for a renewal of her relationship with the new alliances that grow in her close eastern neighborhood. Russia may be difficult, but should be first whenever the, kind, the time is coming. Whenever Eurasia is named in many new contexts, like BRICS, like the new Silk Roads, it is a matter of fact that Europe must play an active part and offer and even insist to get integrated. Europe is a natural part of Eurasia. For centuries, the exchange of goods and cultures brought advantage for both Russia and West Europe. Until today, it remains difficult to say where Europe ends and Asia begins. While the presence of the USA on European territory was and is an exceptional situation, the presence of Europeans in Russia and vice versa is a normality since centuries. The transatlantic dominance can be modified in favor of a continental belonging. If Europa will succeed in creating a safe space for all of her citizens inside her own house and live in harmony with her neighbors, then the time may come for Europe to offer a safe space for difficult conversations to others. She may grow into her role as a mediator, perhaps a midwife for the birth of a new consciousness, perhaps a basket containing fruits and seeds for a true world unity and a wise presentation of the plan for spreading to the East and the West.
Thank you. Thank you very much, Sabine, for this excursion to Europe. We will now take this richness into our council chamber, holding space for Europe. Europe as a living entity, an evolving being, maybe we have already a little bit a feeling for Europe as a living being. So in meditation, we will listen to her as if she speaks directly to us. And this is a pioneering work. It may not work out. We are in a lab. So we will appreciate your honest feedback afterwards also on on this ex experimentary uh, method that, of course, we are shaping this work together. Okay. So let us take a deep breath. And collecting ourselves inwards now, releasing all that we have heard. Taking a moment to ground in our body. Sitting well on the earth. Experiencing ourselves in the love and freedom of our soul. Opening our consciousness now to the call for planetary psychosynthesis. And following this call, let us make our way to the beautiful building set in nature, which we already know very well. Entering into the quiet and clear and spacious council chamber of elders in training. Taking our places in geometric order. Sensing the atmosphere in the chamber, the geometrical harmony. Breathing it in for a moment. And in the center of the chamber, visualize the flame of our combined, sustained will to love. Let our hearts tune to it, holding together this space of intent, sustained love. And tuning now into the mental space of the council chamber, a calm, clear, lighted space that we together hold, mind to mind. This field vibrates to the rate of the Ajna center of the planet. 
and through this vibration we are linked with our fellow world workers in all nations. Sense this network for a moment, becoming more perceivable. And staying focused in our group Ajna Center, let us now mentally reach out towards the Ashramic world. Opening our consciousness to the co-workers in the ashram who guide this work of the nation's lab. Letting our vibration gradually fine tune and swing into the ashramic thought field. And as we do so, our feet remain solidly on the floor of the council chamber. Building a bridge of consciousness between the council chamber and the ashramic world. Holding a channel open and being aware of four great Deva beings helping us to hold this space. One at each direction, the north, south, east and west. Holding this space stable, and opening it to invite Europe as a living entity, sensing the Europe being entering our council chamber. We welcome her, feeling her presence. And invite her to speak to us. And we listen to her. Tired I am. Which is my basket? My innermost wish is to share my fruits and seeds with all my children equally and with the wider human family. To care for all equally May this be enough to bring about peace? I am determined to regain my sovereignty in order to fulfill my soul task. I am curious to try out the idea of a European Republic of Citizens and see if it may be a good model for the new era. I yearn to reconnect with Russia.
I resolve to bring my house in order so that I can fulfill my soul task. It is my innermost wish to contribute my part towards the new era, part taking of all and giving to all. Taking a moment now to let the received words reverberate in the council chamber. listening to the responses inside of us. And gently now, let us release Europe from our council chamber with a blessing. And breathing, taking another moment in each other's presence. Just appreciating and enjoying the lighted space that we have built together. And gently we return to daily consciousness, taking a minute or so to note down any impressions before we will start our sharing. Yeah, so we invite you now to share our impressions, questions, and wishes. 
and share them with Europe as a living being. We know from our snapshot experiences how precious these feedbacks are. In our experience, a brief and synthetic sentence or two will have the deepest value. And we will experiment like last time also with collecting them onto a, a whiteboard, onto the screen. Alexander will, will write them. And whoever would like to, it could be a new and quite potent experience to address Europe in the first person. So as if we speak to a real person. You have a feeling response um, and yet brief, concise. And when you share, please state from which nation you come. And if it if it suits you, address Europe as a representative of your own nation. This is Margot from Canada. Dear Europe, my heart is pounding and my stomach is in knots as I speak to you. To hear you as you introduced yourself. I kept saying, what does this have to do with me who lives so far from you where my people came here to flee from you and i struggled to stay present throughout your excellent introduction when you were invited into the council chamber the first word that came flashing into my mind was trust, trust, trust. And as I listened to you and your desire to reunite with Russia, so many, so many hard feelings came and recognizing as, as an ally, as a member of NATO, as a member of the Allied Forces in the past, how much healing there is to do. And I, I greet you and I honor you, Europe, Europa, as you come into your sovereignty. and welcome you in this council chamber. With gratitude. Hello, I can go this here. is, <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> Greta, go. Okay. Go ahead. I can go yes. ahead. I'm Greta from Denmark. And from Denmark, we welcome you into the council chamber and hope you will find the power of diversity on the way to a higher synthesis. Thank you. And this is Helen from Israel. 
and I share here as a resident of the Middle East. As you, Europe, have shaped our area over the ages, please, now let us be good partners, you and me, in co-creating the world community in full acknowledgement and in full respect of our mutual cultures for the future. Uh, hello, <clears throat> yes, Annette is speaking, speaking for Germany. So, dear Europe, open your heart to the colorful and rich diversity of all your inner parts of yourself, also for the smallest one. And then, with the wisdom of your heart and the values of equality and freedom, build right human relations and bridges to peace within yourself and for others. May you become, may you be a shining symbol for unity in diversity and for love in action. This is Andrea from the United States. Dear Mother Europe, you know so well that a mother's job, her responsibilities to create, to nurture, to guide, to mediate, to lead by example, and to listen with compassion and inclusiveness is never completed. Sweet Princess Europa, your soul speaks with the love wisdom of a queen, a true mother of the world that will birth the harmony of the Aquarian age. We are so grateful for your presence in our global council chamber. Hello, this is Judy from the United States. Dear Europe, your earnestness shows that you have touched your soul. And in that, uh, you are open to your soul's purpose, healing to become whole. And in your healing will be the greater world's healing. History says that you can. Balance and synthesis these are purposes of Shambhala, and you hold the key to that aspect of its purpose. Eurasia, I serve, I link two ways. These two need to be brought together. This is Sabina speaking from Germany. Europe, remember who you are and never let yourself be stopped to focus what you will become, a peaceful place for synthesis.
This is Deborah from the United States. Europa, when you entered the council chamber with your voice of wisdom, I heard the voice of Portia saying the quality of mercy is not strained. You carried the voice of the women of Greece and Alexandria. The words of wisdom, heart and science. And in your yearning to reunite with Russia, I understood that in that effort to reunite, you were shedding ancient patriarchy into the heart of the mother of the world, reaching uh, out to mother Russia and together serving the greater plan and the great divine feminine, which in the words of Agni Yoga say regarding patriarchy, they are rending the raiment of the Lord. They scoff at its tatters, but the daughters of the world and the mother of the universe will mend the pieces and so you shall and we honor you this is Jaisha from Canada Dear soul of Europe, as best as I can sense, your open, spacious response to the plan that Sabina so beautifully articulated. There is a joyous, delight in our recognizing your feminine nature. As you fulfill your soul purpose and take a lead on the world stage to show humanity what right relations amongst its citizens and with the land can be. Thank you. This is Martha from the United States, resident of Canada. Dear Europe, I congratulate you as a model for the future. Truly, you lead the way as you seek to unite in full cooperation with your beloved Deva. And in so doing, become whole. I heard your yearning and I will remember the experimental nature of developing as a European Republic of citizens. I heard you touching your own soul 
as you acknowledged those problematic areas. I carry some of the karmic burden for the presence of a quality of militarism that is projected through my own beloved country. And I seek to minimize that. I honor your development as a Republic of Citizens through your determination to promote local councils. As citizens develop skill and bravery, courage to take on the responsibility that democracy carries with it. I recognized and will register your recognition of all the futures groups within Europe seeking to declare their effectiveness and their cooperation with the soul of Europe. Together, let us all become one planetary citizen as we love the growing consciousness of all humanity. Thank you for your activism in the growth of soul consciousness. Uh, this is uh, Jonathan from uh, Portugal within the field of Europe and to honor Europa the Phoenician princess becoming the mother coming of age whose beauty is in our diversity rich in culture with an eye to the future, seeing a need to establish right relationships, both with our own ancestry from past genocide, with ourselves coming of age as we the people within Europe and with all other neighborhood peoples in so many regions with whom we have soul relationships, relationships that both respect each other and frees ourselves, ourselves as we the people throughout this world from overblown capitalism and control and to honor our unity, our individual freedom of sovereignty and soul expression. May joy, harmony and beauty be with you. Thank you.
This is Anne from Canada. Dear, dear Europe, I open my heart to you. I open myself from a place where peacemaking has been our pride. And I realize that unless we join hands and hearts and minds and souls, that we will not be able to transform peacemaking into something new, into something that goes beyond what we have understood in our consciousness so far. I welcome you in this council chamber. I welcome you as a seeker, as an experimenter, as we look together towards right relationship. And what does that mean today in this new council chamber? Where will it take us? Let us remain in this space of unknown that is wanting to declare itself through all of us, all of we citizens of the world, no matter where we are geographically situated. Let us open up this space a space of citizenship that breaks the boundaries, the boundaries of planetary knowing into something beyond what we can hold yet. I am in gratitude of hearing your voice. And I see that we are lighting the pathway as we go together. I send you blessings from this faraway place where the mother of the world sits above the Arctic circle, looking, raining down all of her love to all of us. Thank you to everyone. Let us hold this interaction between Europe and the nations in our group chalice to do its work of absorption, transmutation and expression. Taking a moment for this. And we extend these offerings to Europe as gifts on the way. So we have time left for another round of sharing. We would like to invite any thoughts about this new way of working and sharing in the first person. Um, yes, so we would be grateful for, for your input.
I think that um, by utilizing the first person, we acknowledge the entity of this being. And in that acknowledgement, um, there's a whole new relationship that is established and a larger understanding of the purpose for which that entity is a unity. I think when we think of it instead of relating to it, um, the dynamic is kind of askew, but by relating to this larger entity as the entity that it is, um, we basically acknowledge and alive in its presence. Thank you, Judy. Very valuable. This is Deborah, and I find this to be just a very beautiful um, process. And I found it to resound with the fourth ray energy, which is coming online in 2025. Um, I would also request a copy, a written copy of Sabina's talk, which was really inspiring, but I had tr difficulty hearing every detail just with the audio so um thank you for putting this together and thank all of us for having the experimental courage and uh ex explore exploratory urge uh to serve leading to 2025 thank you hmm Thanks, Debra. Yes, we will send it to you, a copy. And yes, it's a fourth ray. It seems like a fourth, a fourth ray method huh, to speak in the first person. Thanks for this. I think that when we speak as a first person and we listen as a first person, we have the opportunity to experiment with truly understanding identification. And I think that's a very important part of how we will serve in greater and greater ways. It is, it's a wonderful opportunity. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With identification, you mean that there is a direct experience? Yes, and there is an opportunity to sense from within the entity that yeah. I think is such a part of, of, of really that, that highest aspect of identification. We become one with that identity mm -hmm. and with the other. Yeah. It's it goes beyond the theory, right? Because beyond uh, getting information, it's really feeling it. That's what uh, what we were um, experimenting with now. You know, by it is so important to think our thoughts as clearly as possible about whatever is under consideration. But then maybe an added step can be this: that we bring this into into the feelable to make it more real, to make um, more authentic, more liv livable, living. It's also a channel of communication, mm -hmm. I felt. Mm. Which um, helps me um, be more more conscious, more aware of where I stand, where this entity stands. And uh, thank you, Sabina, for this really wonderful uh, 
presentation of this uh, princess. Uh, I saw her as uh, something more whole. Mm. Yeah, and I can relate to her. Yeah, thanks. This is Margo. I um, I was really quite surprised by how strongly Sabina's beautiful and clear presentation affected me. Um, I'm still having physical physical reactions to it, and um, I, I I'm recognizing I'm not as much of a thinker as I am a feeler. So this mm. this approach um, certainly certainly evoked I I'll say healing healing um, and and to listen to to the co measured responses of of everyone as as they've shared. Uh, the 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 tone the, the the diplomacy the acceptance the the recognition at a cellular level that we are one humanity and that uh, a very large fractal of this one humanity is coming into her sovereignty to, as Andrea was saying, to address one in the first person, whether it's, it's a human or an entity or a plant or an animal, it, these are all our relations. And the first person really supports that. Thank you for the, for the courage to um, continue to explore and create such a safe space for us to do so. Hmm. Thanks a lot, Margot. When one fractal of our one humanity comes into its maturity, or even if we just visualize that, it has an effect on the whole. That's a very beautiful recognition. Thanks. Is there anyone else who would like to share before we Come to the closing part. So I think, <clears throat> yes? Yes. <laughs> okay. um, this is uh, Martha. The the um, I wanted to everything everyone said absolutely uh, am at one with that. This is um, transmutive is the is the best I can say. When the presentation was offered, um, the deva of equality <clears throat> was very present in the space that I'm in. As a, as a deep yearning for us healing to be one another. So just thank you that to remind us the healing of nations is the healing of ourselves. Thank you. Mm, thank you. Thanks, Martha.
Yeah, it's, uh, I see Simon raised, you raised your hand. Ah, hi, Uta. I just Hello, wanted, Simon. I just wanted to add, and the healing of ourselves is the healing of the nations. Hmm. Thank you. Okay. So thank you for all your feedback. So let us uh, continue um, experimenting with it as we now go um, through this year, whoever would like, of those who would uh, uh, would want to present. Um, Alexander, perhaps you could bring on the slide of the year program again to have a look. We have a few um, friends, groups already that uh, we know will take a slot. The next one is up on May 28, and it is the USA and its relationships. So since we have this uh, year's plan, it's, uh, it's an opportunity for us to perhaps um, keep in mind the next session and let it already work in us and seeding it. Uh, for the next month. Yeah, and um, yeah, I give it over to you now, Alexander, for your announcements. Thank you, Uta. Um, thank you, friends, for very fruitful weaving of our uh, impressions as we continue experimenting with the format of working in the council chamber. I want to invite uh, you to join our ongoing daily vigil. Um, where through the group invocation and evocation, we invoke the soul consciousness in humanity. Um, at, uh, it happens every day at uh, 8 p.m. universal time. So it's uh, half an starts in half an hour. And also I invite you to join the coming meditation for the common good uh, quarter moon meeting this uh, Friday at 6 p.m. GMT. And um, if you're not receiving notifications for this program, I invite you to update your mailing preferences. The link is in the chat to update your uh, subscription form. In the current cycle of Taurus, uh, the topic of the meditation for the common good is revealing the divine plan, becoming the planetary ajna to build spirit into matter. So we invite you to join our meeting this Friday at 6 p.m. Universal Time. And at the coming new moon, uh, we will continue uh, our new program, New Moon Groups Check-In. And on May 10th, we invite you to join our circle, a meeting with the International Network of Esoteric uh, Healers. Um, that's on May 10th. Thank you, 
and much appreciation for your presence. Over to you, Uta. Yeah, I would also like to invite you to our Monday um, Middle East Vigil, which is also it, uh, on 6, uh, 6 p.m. Um, universal time. Uh, welcome to this too. Yes, thank okay. you. Uh, sorry for forgetting mm -hmm. to bring that up. Yes, every mm -hmm. Monday, please join yes, us. Yes. It's an ongoing wave of support for for the Middle East. Um, Alexander, would you like perhaps to say uh, something f about the Leo sensitivity gathering, telepathy gathering? We are now working on preparing the um, Leo festival in the group gathering. It's an experiment in telepathic alignment. And uh, you probably received the announcement and invitation to join this intergroup experiment. So if your group is interested to join this work or maybe to learn about this work more and you didn't receive this uh, invitation, please contact us and we will gladly share with you all the information. Okay, so let us, for closure, uh, say the mantra of the spirit of peace. Let the forces of light Bring illumination to mankind. Let the spirit of peace be spread abroad. May men of goodwill everywhere meet in a spirit of cooperation. May forgiveness on the part of all be the keynote at this time. Let power attend the efforts of the Great Ones. So let it be and help us to do our part. Oh. Thank you, friends. See you next month. <laughs>